this is the part of ensanche, means extension. Okay. Oh, oh, can go also very quick to this area and then walk this area. This might be a good idea. You think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Sure. Whatever you think. We like it, to walk. It looks so far away, but it's, but it's not. not. Yeah. It's not. Hello, and welcome to Bilbao, a beautiful city in the north of Spain, in the Basque region, where we're spending a couple of days exploring the beautiful architecture, rich history and culture, and wonderful food. Bilbao is a terrifically walkable city, so today we're exploring many of the city's highlights on foot, starting with the Moywa Square area beside the lovely Hotel Carlton, where we're staying. One of the most notable buildings in the city borders the square, the Flemish Building. Also known as the Chavari Palace, this extraordinary building was designed in 1889 by Belgian architect Paul Henker as a home for businessman Victor Chavari, Marquis of Triano, who wanted a home built in the Flemish Renaissance style. Hanker, the architect, was known for his Art Nouveau style, characterized by its use of organic forms and decorative elements. As you can see, the building has a distinctive curved facade with intricate stonework and ornate balconies. It's just gorgeous and is considered by many to be one of the most remarkable buildings in Bilbao, which is saying something because Bilbao has some incredible architecture. One of the great curiosities of this building is that each window is a unique size and shape. The facade also has interesting colors and all kinds of intricate details, decorations, and elegant archways. Today, the palace serves as home to the government of Spain in the province of Biscay, which Bilbao is a part of. One of the most modern and innovative buildings in Bilbao is the Basque Health Department headquarters. You can't miss it. The building was designed by a renowned Spanish architect in 2010, and its design is notable for its use of light and space, as well as its focus on sustainability and energy efficiency. The building is organized around a central atrium, which allows for natural light to flow throughout the space. The exterior of the building features a unique glass facade and is designed to maximize natural light while minimizing heat gain. It's a standout in a city that has so many buildings of interesting design. The buildings are not so nice, but they're there. Yeah, it's the way it is. But uh, a lot of the very very clean. Okay. It is very clean. It is clean. Yeah. 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 Because it was not always like this. <laughs> this, this. This is a beautiful building. This is the so-called Alondiga. It's, a, it's an Arabic word from Alondiga, and this is called also Ascuna Centra. This is uh, a wine uh, magazine, a former wine magazine. It's over 100 years old. It was built by Ricardo Bastida, and uh, the fa they were kept the facade, and inside it's completely different. I'd like to show you. The next stop on our walking tour is the La Alhondiga a former wine warehouse and market constructed in the early 20th century that was transformed in 2010 into a spectacular modern space for art, culture, and leisure. When we walked into this place, it took our breath away. The renovation was carried out by renowned French designer Philippe Stark, who transformed the building's interior with a variety of contemporary elements and modern technologies, one of the most impressive features of the building is its glass bottom swimming pool, which is suspended above the main atrium and offers breathtaking views of the space below if you happen to be going for a swim. In addition to the swimming pool, La Alhondiga features a cinema, a fitness center, a library, and a variety of exhibition spaces. The building is also home to a number of shops, restaurants, and bars, making it a popular destination for both locals and tourists. One of the most notable features of this fabulous building is its facade, which was designed by local artist Daniel Kanagar. The facade features a series of LED lights that create a dynamic and ever-changing display of colors and patterns, adding to the building's stunning aesthetic appeal. La Alhandiga has become a cultural hub in Bilbao, hosting a wide range of events and activities throughout the year. 
Its unique design and innovative features have made it a must-see destination for anyone visiting the city, and it serves as a prime example of Bilbao's commitment to art, culture, and modernity. Oh, What's a pincho? It's like tapas. It's the same thing like tapas, just much more beautiful, much mm. better. Continuing our tour into the historic center of the city, we come to sleek and modern Biblioteca Foral de Biscaya in Spanish, near the city's main square. This is the main library of the province of Biscay and serves as a cultural and educational resource for the community. The library's collection consists of over one million items, including books, periodicals, maps, manuscripts, photographs, and audiovisual materials. The library and an adjacent building were redesigned in 2007, the result of an open architecture competition, into the modern and functional structure we see today, with ample natural light and open spaces for reading, studying, and even socializing. It's open to the public and welcomes visitors from around the world. Getting around Bilbao is easy because its public transportation system is well-developed and efficient. The city has a network of buses, trams, and a metro system that connects the city center with its suburbs and neighboring towns. We took a peek at the metro system, called Metro Bilbao, which is considered one of the city's most convenient and popular transportation options. The network has three lines and over 40 stations, covering a large part of the city and its surrounding area. Happy to report that the metro is clean, safe, and reliable, with frequent trains running from early morning until late at night. It's also wheelchair accessible and has dedicated spaces for bicycles. Just one more of the many reasons to love Bilbao. Café Iruna was our stop for a quick bite. It's a historic café located in the heart of Bilbao. Established in 1903, the café's interior is stunning, with a beautiful Art Nouveau design that includes ornate yes, stucco I, ceilings, I stained glass that. windows, and an this. impressive marble bar. The café has a cozy and relaxed atmosphere, making it the perfect place to sit back relax, and enjoy a cup of coffee or a delicious Spanish pastry. Café Aruna also has a rich cultural history and has played a significant role in the city's cultural and literary scene. The café was a favorite spot for famous writers and artists such as Ernest Hemingway, one of my favorite authors, who would often spend hours writing and socializing at the café. In addition to its literary heritage, the café is also known for its delicious coffee and wonderful pastries. We highly recommend Café Aruna as an essential stop on any Bilbao itinerary because it gives you a chance to experience the city's cultural and literary history while enjoying some delicious drinks and, you know, tasty treats in a beautiful and cozy setting. Near the end of our walking tour, which covered almost five miles, we came across a demonstration by local metal workers who were seeking fairer, safer working conditions. Being folks who live outside of Washington, D.C., demonstrations were nothing new to us, so this felt like a slice of home. I was saying how in D.C. we're very familiar with this sort of thing because all the time you have people coming to demonstrate about this or that. The river Nerbion flows through the Basque country, including the city of Bilbao. The river has historically been an essential waterway for the region's economy and transportation. However, in the 20th century, industrialization and urbanization led to severe pollution of the river. Industrial waste, sewage, and other contaminants were regularly discharged into the river, leading to a big environmental mess and health concerns for those living in the surrounding area. Our guide said that swimming in, or more likely falling into the river, could literally kill you. 
To address the pollution problem, many significant efforts have been made in recent years to clean up the river. The yeah. regional government and local municipalities have invested in wastewater treatment plants, improved industrial regulations, and implemented policies to promote sustainable development along the riverfront. Exactly. So every six hours, we have high tide, low tide, fresh water, salt water, fresh yeah. water, salt water. Okay. That's so. the the high tide is when you get the brackish water, right? Yes, exactly. And now it's look at this. Uh, here it's mixing now. Can you see this? Yeah. It's mixing now. I think it's changing now. One significant initiative is the Nearbion River Regeneration Plan, which was launched in 1992. The plan aimed to restore the river's ecological health, improve water quality, and enhance the riverfront's urban landscape. This included the construction of new parks, walkways, and public spaces, as well as the creation of green corridors and wetlands to help filter pollutants from the water. Another crucial initiative has been the development of the Bilbao Metropolitan Green Ring, a network of green spaces that encircles the city, including the river. The Green Ring helps to protect and enhance the natural environment around the river, providing an essential buffer against urban and industrial development. These efforts to clean up the river have been largely successful, and water quality has now improved significantly, with the river now a vital natural resource for the region, providing recreation and biodiversity and contributing to the region's economic and cultural vitality. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? So the, over here, this big red white flag uh -huh. is Bilbao's flag, the biggest it could be, right? Yeah. The red white. Then you have the bass <laughs> right there, and then the tiniest one they could find is the one for Spain <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> Our next stop in the old town of Bilbao is the Mercado de la Ribera, one of the largest indoor food markets in Europe. Located in a spacious building on the banks of the Nebion River, this market offers a wide range of fresh produce, including fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, and cheese. The market is renowned for its high quality products and you'll find some of the best seafood in the region here. We had those for lunch one day really? in Portugal, yeah. I am oh. not a fan of barnacles, I have to say. They taste like the sea, I love them. They taste nasty. It is alive. Yeah, the thing in there was moving. It scared the crap out of me. Look, that one is moving too. The market's vendors are friendly and knowledgeable, and you can learn about and taste the local culinary traditions and specialties. The market has three floors, with the ground floor home to the vibrant colors and smells of the fresh food stalls. The upper floors are reserved for cafes, bars, and restaurants. Here, you can enjoy traditional Basque pinchos, or tapas, at the many bars and restaurants that offer a bright and lively atmosphere. The market also hosts various special events throughout the year, including wine tastings, cooking classes, and workshops on traditional Basque cooking techniques, though, sadly, we did not have the time to attend any of these. One of the most impressive features of the market, besides all the great food, is its stunning architecture. The market was designed and built in the 1920s. It has a beautiful Art Deco facade and large stained glass windows that allow light to flood into the market. We had a wonderful time wandering around the place and taking it all in. Definitely put this on your must experience list if you're in Bilbao.
Thank you for watching our vlog. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. We're always striving to create more great content, and we would be so grateful if you could help us grow our channel by subscribing. Every subscriber means so much to us, and we can't wait to reach our next milestone of a thousand subscribers with your support. So please hit that button and be a part of our community. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next one.